Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Another unboxing day. A lot of new guitars with this because ever since I announced that, hey, I can help you guys get better deals on new guitars, shop around for you, I've been getting a lot of people taking me up on this offer. So we've got some cool guitars here that I wouldn't have purchased otherwise. Our first one here is from the Music Zoo. And if you've never purchased from them, I would suggest this shop. They're kind of like a small time sweet water. They don't always have the largest selection, but they do kind of have some cool guitars that are also used as well as new. And hey, we even get a cool little polishing cloth here. Thanks guys. But kind of a funny story with these guys. Before I purchased this guitar, I actually purchased another one from them but it ended up like accidentally being listed because it was that white burst Les Paul Custom. And I swear I made a wire in about that guitar or I planned to at one point in time, but it sold. So when I saw it get listed again, it's like, great, this is my second chance for it. So I made an offer, they accepted it, but you know, after a week it hadn't shipped, which was really strange for the Music Zoo because these guys have always been very punctual with their shipping. So it ended up being that their system accidentally listed it again. And uh, that was slightly before I bought this guitar. But the reason why I went with Music Zoo this time instead of Musician's Friend and stuff is this was an exclusive model. Musician's Friend either sold out of it or never got them. So it was between Sweetwater and Music Zoo and Music Zoo treated me better. They got me a better deal by just a hair. But sometimes that little hair of a price is what makes things happen versus not happen. But it looks like we have a Fender gig bag in here. And I was actually getting quite a few people asking me to review this model. So it just kind of worked out that somebody, you know, hired me for my services to get them the best deal possible. So what is our first unboxed guitar today? I will tell you, it's a Fender. It's the gig bag's not lying to you, and it's limited edition. It's also wrapped up in all this plastic. <laughs> Hold on a second. I believe this is a Made in Japan Fender, if I remember correctly. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? You know, that actually works really well, this white headstock paired with that maple on the side, because the glossiness of this really works well with those gold tuners. But this is what is known as the Daybreak Stratocaster, and it was a limited edition that I believe it was only released like a, uh, a week or two ago. I'll get you more information in the review and demo of this one of how many were made, but it was only a couple hundred. And it really is quite a striking Stratocaster. I'm actually really appreciating the fact that there's a full gloss neck on something. So we'll definitely see a review of this one likely the day after this. I'm actually gonna record it today though. And now, hooray, we have a sponsored unboxing. That means you guys have a chance to win one of these items. So if you're new to the channel, check out the description. That'll tell you everything you need to do in order to be eligible to win one of these items. But this one, it's not necessarily guitar related, but just a little bit of fun facts here. My main demographic to my channel is 96.8% male. And the device that most of my viewers use is a phone, 36.2%, just slightly above computer. I don't know how you guys do it. I can't watch YouTube on my phone, it annoys me. And while we're having fun talking analytics here, the main age demographic for my viewership is 25 to 34, but it pretty much spreads itself pretty evenly evenly between 18 to 64. So guys, thank you for tuning in and hey, you too, ladies, all 3.8% of you. <laughs> so this is the Von Moss automatic car mount wireless charger. Now, when I agreed to do the unboxing of this, cause I figured, you know, you know, people use their phones, they might need this, they might want something like this in their car. I didn't realize this was a wireless car charger and me with my decrepitly old iPhone 6 here, I can't believe I'm eight generations plus behind. I won't actually be able to use this, so I'm a little bit sad now, but we'll go ahead and unbox it here anyways. So essentially what you're meant to do with this is it attaches to your car's vent and then it just holds your phone in place for you so you can do like your GPS stuff and it'll wirelessly charge your phone if it's compatible. So it looks like we would plug it in like so. It looks like you have the choice for fast charge and regular charge to plug that into. Then this goes into your outlet within your vehicle. 
Oh, wow. Wasn't expecting that. All right, so it looks like you take this part off and then you put it over top the little ball end. Then you plug that in and then that secures into place. So it looks like if you have two cars, you could potentially have two different ones or maybe it's just a, a different mounting style here. But that just opens and closes like that. Personally, I think this one's a little bit more secure. I like the way this one feels turning it and it opens up. Subscribe! And then you just get that little thing right there and your phone goes in there. Then it just automatically clamps it into place. So even though this one won't technically charge my phone, I could still plug it in. You can see you've got a spot right there and it would hold it in place for GPS. So I guess maybe I can use this, just not to its full potential. I found it helps if you don't hit the release button while testing it. It's secure. If you're interested in winning one of these, check the rules in the description. And even if you don't win, the company has given you a special 10% off discount code if you would like to purchase one. And we need to draw a new winner from my list of subscribers on my website because the last person didn't claim their prize. Congratulations. Honestly, guys, the best way to win these prizes is just to sign up for my newsletter. I actually haven't even sent one out yet because I don't have time, but eventually I will get around to doing that kind of stuff because it seems most people don't ever see the comments. They don't have an email listed on their account. So it just always kind of goes to one of my subscribers to there. So that's the best way to do it. And if you happen to win there and you're outside the US, as long as you cover shipping, I've got no problems uh, shipping it out to you then. Moving on here, another brand new guitar, this time from Guitar Center again. This box is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> and uh, this is something that I actually ended up working a trade for this guitar. So sometimes that's an option. I don't really like doing the trading thing when it comes to brand new guitars. But if you got something interesting enough, sometimes it works out. But remember, I don't do this as a charity service. This is as a business. So if it's worth my time, I'll gladly make a deal with you, especially if you want to buy a cool brand new guitar, which is kind of what I would classify this as. I'm quite curious why this box is so large though, because it's not like a 12 string double neck type thing, because it costs them so much to have a box this big. They should have just resized it down. They would have saved themselves a ton. But then again, this is business shipping, so they probably get a great deal anyways. So this was a limited edition model that's exclusive to Guitar Center that I had never heard of before this guy said, hey, can you help me get a deal on it? And the guitar that he traded me for this, which is in this box that we'll open here in a second, they both just happened to be interesting enough that I didn't really do this deal for the money. I did it for the reviews of some interesting guitars. And it appears we have one of these Gibson side loader boxes. And I already know the reason why it's a side loader. It's because it's so heavy, but there's kind of a, a funny reason why it's this heavy. So the big reveal, why is this thing so heavy? There you go. <laughs> so these cases were used in 2017 for the High Performance series. So for all you people saying, hey, review a high performance guitar, review a high performance guitar. Has your day come? No. <laughs> this is just a big old tease for you. So apparently, I think we all knew the High Performance series didn't sell that well. They must, whoa. <laughs> Is there like a mouse in here? It must have just been the plastic against my table. I'm back to what I was saying. But they must have had a bunch of these cases left over because for this limited edition run, they decided to use them up a little bit. These are super bulky cases. Never, ever, ever take the plastic off of these because once you do, they just get scratched up so fast and that's why people don't like them. But other than that, they're fantastic cases. They have these real wood handles. They kind of have that TSA style latch, but not exactly that. They open up really nicely here. And it's supposed to be like a flight case. And these things retailed for like $700, which is insane. So here's what we've got. This is a beautiful guitar. So you know how CME has a whole walnut thing? They do everything in a limited edition with a walnut color. Guitar Center has something called rose gold. 
And that's what this guy is. It's a Rose Gold SG. I know they at least have a Les Paul out there that someone was showing me last year. I just thought this was such an interesting SG. And what's really surprising me about this is this is a fat necked SG. Usually when I think SG, I think 60s slim, but this thing's actually kind of a rounded 50s. The other thing, I'm getting a very overpowering scent from this thing. It's that brand new Gibson scent. Doesn't necessarily smell like vanilla anymore though. Just more of like a freshly sprayed lacquer. I hope you guys enjoy getting to take a look at this, you know, slightly less than normal colored SG. Man, I can't get that smell of that SG out of here. <laughs> Brand new Gibson doesn't smell as good as it used to. You gotta let those things air out a day or so. But what did I trade that guitar for? I got this one plus a little bit of cash to make it worth my while. And it's a Gibson box, so we're getting some more Gibson reviews in here. You know what I'm mainly known for? You'll just have to find out. <laughs> I find it funny. People know that I'm going to be unboxing it on the show, so they do an extra good job packing the stuff. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if every seller that packed a guitar up thought, hey, Trogley's going to unbox this, so I might as well do a good job. There really is an art to packing a guitar, and I have fun doing it most of the time. The only time it's stressful to ship a guitar for me is if I don't have the right materials. So do yourself a favor, go buy some bubble wrap and never be scared to ship a guitar again. I get all mine from a place called 4bubble.com. Not a sponsored video, I just like their product. And since I'm local, I can buy it a lot cheaper since they don't have to ship it. I can guarantee you there's not a Gibson in this rectangle case. This was kind of an interesting Stratocaster that I've always wanted to try, and it just kind of happened to work out here. So it's one of those sandblasted finish ones, but it was a limited edition for Sweetwater. Take a look at this. It's interesting. It's not completely flat. They've blasted away parts of the body. It kind of has a, a blue jean vibe to it. I probably wouldn't be the first one that I would pick off of the store shelf just because of how rough and rigid this thing is. But, you know, it's kind of a cool limited edition. So I'm sure Fender guys will dig this one because you like what you like. And eventually, once you have so much of what you like, you want something similar, but a little bit different. And that's kind of exactly what this Stratocaster is going for. So this one will be coming to a Fender Friday near you probably in a couple of months. I'm so backed up on these Fenders. I think this is one that'll probably grow on me the more I play it. And now it's time to do some boxing and finish up some stories for quite a few guitars. Our first one right here is that Ibanez bass that I was hired as an undercover personal shopper to get this from my local music store. That was a super fun video to make and honestly this bass impressed me especially at its price point of about 400 bucks. So definitely check out that video if you happen to have missed it but we need to get this base packed up. And it's a little bit scary because I don't have a gig bag and I don't have a case, but you know, we're gonna pack it up so it arrives safely anyways. Let's get to it. But the final story to, you know, kind of wrap up here is this guitar. This is the instrument that I was tricked into buying brand new, or so I thought. So what happened is after I released that video, about two or three days later, I did finally hear back from the guy. So don't worry, he didn't die on us. But he was admitted to the hospital, so he was unable to complete the trade at that point in time. And then, in between then and there, I found out that this thing actually got damaged in shipping, or maybe it was just missed at the factory, because it did take me quite a while to notice that this got dinged up against something. And it impressed the finish, it didn't quite completely chip or crack it off. So after I did the full review and demo of this beautiful guitar, set the intonation a little bit better, it did end up finding a great new home that we have to ship it off to today. But this example, it's so cool because of that bird's eye and the cool Pau Ferro fretboard. So we might have to unbox another one of these in the future to finally get that triple pickup Jaguar or Jazzmaster. I forget which one it is. But until that day, let's go ahead and say goodbye to this one.
Here's a guitar that we haven't seen in quite a while. I think I did the review on this one two, maybe three months ago. So if you're new to the channel, you might want to check that out because you probably missed it. But this is the Purple Widow Les Paul from the second generation of Widows, but the first generation of the Colored Widows. So I was up late last night doing uh, fruit baskets for my mom's company, and I just happened to get a message about this one. And it was kind of a good thing that I was around because he had some questions about it, needed help deciding which widow was best for him. Because he was kind of doing a purple guitar collection is from what I could gather from him. He was just buying a bunch of purple guitars that night. And uh, he was asking me why this one was such a dark hue. And sometimes, you know, the different runs, they will be slightly different colors, but sometimes it just depends on the lighting and things like that. The thing that he didn't like about this one is he didn't like the headstock lines around the inlays. That'll happen to all of them eventually. So I think he went with the right decision, getting a better deal and getting the second run that was colored. Because this is the version that's gonna be collectible one day. You can mark my words on that. But I hope he enjoys this purple Paul and good luck with his purple guitar collection. I hope you troglodytes enjoyed the boxing and unboxing episode today and enjoyed the stories within it. And don't forget to leave your comment for a chance to win one of them phone chargers for your car. Take care.